On the eve of the Promoto Cross opener, word came down that defending 450 class champion Dylan Ferrandis will miss the first race of the year with an injured thumb. Which 450 class superstar will rise to the occasion and grab the early momentum at Pala? We will race under the California sun, but the stars will be out when the gate drops on the 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross. Hello, everyone, and welcome to California. Jason Wygan, all year I'll be joined by legends in the booth today. It's seven-time AMA national champion Rick Johnson and the king of Supercross and 250 national motocross champion Jeremy McGrath. We're talking our 450 class and the huge news. Last year's champion Dylan Ferrandis already out. He crashed on this racetrack a few days ago and tore a ligament in his thumb. So Rick Johnson, it's more wide open than ever. And we have some surprises. Fast guys, we have plenty of them. Eli Tomac looks very, very strong. But we have two surprises out there as well, and that is that Tony Caroli and Ryan Dungey both in the top 10. But it was Chase Sexton who pulled off the pole position by one second over his teammate, Ken Roxon. So unbelievable weather conditions. Great racing coming your way. All right, so great riders and a great lineup. Jeremy, talk about the racetrack where they're going to do battle today. Well, I can tell you this. The weather is cooperating. It's going to be a nice, cool day of racing. These guys are going to be stuck. Track is treacherous. Lots of uphills, lots of downhills. Got to carry a lot of speed. Bike setup's going to be key. Going to be some great racing out there today. It's going to be tough. Okay, and there are so many contenders for this 450 National Motocross Championship. Let's get thoughts from some of the key contenders as they head into the 2022 season. My expectations for 2022 Motocross Championship is I'm going to go out and I'm going to pretend like nothing happened doing Supercross. Um, I still have confidence in myself and I'm going to prepare myself really good. So I hope we can we can get some good racing in and, and get back on the podium, hopefully have some wins in there. And up until now, every single year I've been battling for a championship and that is my goal again. You know, I want to I want to shoot high and I know that I can do it. To be honest, to uh, be able to break through in Motocross and be able to get some of those wins um, I think it's just going to take, you know, a good mindset. For me, I think I really need to be enjoying myself and I need to be, uh, you know, just keeping my middle of the weeks really good. So I'm excited to show up to the races and um, do battles. So uh, for me, I've always enjoyed outdoors. I'm really looking forward to it. Expectations of 2022 are obviously uh, winning. I like winning. Nothing doesn't, doesn't, nothing feels better than winning. So definitely going, going after those wins. We're going to have great momentum going into motocross, and it's just because we all work so well together. And that's just that's just having the, the team together and, and, you know, everyone being on the same page and, uh, you know, everyone kind of going with the same tune. So I, I'm excited just to get going with it. All right, just some of the contenders in our 450 class. But the stars in qualifying, at least, were the Honda boys with Chase Sexton and Ken Roxon. Let's send it down to Jason Thomas with more on the boys that are riding red. JT? Well, today's been an incredible ride so far from all of the Team Honda HRC. Next up are Chase Sexton and Ken Roxon in this 450 class. Now, Chase Sexton was your winner at one of the rounds here at Fox Raceway last year, and Ken Roxon was your Moto2 winner at this racetrack last year. And they came out swinging this morning with two of the fastest qualifying sessions of the day. So it's up to them now. I'm, I'm seeing more red at the front today. They've just been on fire all weekend long. Yeah, they were 1-2 in our 250 class moto that just finished with the Lawrence brothers. Here we go again, and we'll show you the racetrack now that these riders are going to be competing on. It is the MX versus ATV Legends track map. All right, as we watch, the first thing you got to get through is this left and right-hander 190-degree turn. As they come through the other, got to survive that. It was clean in the 250 race. Then it goes into a drag and back into a lot of big but super cross-style jumps, Jim, uh, Jeremy. The track is going to be treacherous, lots of big jumps. One of the key things is bike setup. There's some big bumps on these downhills. Going to have to carry a lot of momentum, a lot of speed. You know how that goes. It has to be consistent through the whole moto to get it done. And they got to get it to the finish line with a lot of momentum, a lot of speed. And now with a little bit of water on the track, it's a little bit hard and slick. So those first couple laps are going to be treacherous, but you got to watch the lines in the corners. So that is our MX versus ATV Legends track map. 
Dylan Ferrandis, your defending champ, is out at least for the weekend and the foreseeable future. He had to get surgery on his thumb after crashing here on Tuesday. That is a heartbreaker for him, but there is no shortage of star power in this class. Even with him out, of course, led by the three-time champion of this class, Eli Tomac, who was absolutely on fire and route to the Monster Energy Supercross title earlier this year. Ken Roxon is back and rejuvenated. He's a two-time 450 national champ in this series. And Tony Caroli, the nine-time world champion, before he retires, he wants to check this one off the bucket list and race in the United States. Ryan Dungey is back, has not raced professionally in five years. Justin Barsha said he wants to race to win. Let's see if he can get it done. The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by Lucas Oil. Keep that engine alive. General Tire, anywhere is possible. And by Honda, celebrating 50 years of off-road dominance. And Monster Energy bringing some freestyle into opening ceremonies here for Lucas Oil Pro Motocross. Even more stuff for the fans to see and do. What a great weekend we have had to kick off the 50th anniversary celebration of this season. Oh, there's Dean Wilson out with injury right now, but a lot of the riders have houses in this area. They're still coming out to the races to interact with the fans and their friends. So we are ready, 450 class is up next. First moto of the year, Fox Raceway at Pala, California. Of course, we race two motos in each class. We'll be back the next two hours, 250 Moto2 and 450 Moto2. And we'll have a Tuesday night post-race show right here on Mav TV at 6.30 p.m. All right, time for the KTM keys to the moto. Well, one of the things these guys are going to have to do is keep their momentum. There's a lot of uphills, a lot of downhills with a lot of bumps. If you don't get the drive up the hill and down the hill, you're going to lose a lot of time. So look out for them to keep some speed up these hills and down them. Absolutely, definitely with the 450. But I'm going to say it's line selection. You can see the berms go all the way to the edge side to the outside. They're using a lot of the insides. Lines are changing all day long. you got to pick the right ones to win. All right, Fly Racing 32nd card is up. We're about to drop the gate on the first 30-minute and two-lap moto of the year in the 450 class of Lucas Oil Pro Motocross. So many stories. Ryan Dungey coming out of retirement. The nine-time world champion Tony Caroli coming to the United States. Eli Tomac getting his old momentum back with the Monster Energy Supercross title. Jason Anderson riding better than ever. Even with our defending champion Dylan Ferrandez out, if anything, it has led to an even more wide open field and it all starts right now. Ken Roxon up the inside, big battle right there. He's able to grab that motosport.com hole shot. Shane McArath at number 12, the white rock star Husky right there with him. Eli Tomac in third, but Roxon, no surprise, back with a vengeance here in motocross. Eli Tomac with a great start on the inside, didn't get the hole shot, but this is a dangerous Eli Tomac. He can see the leader, he can see Roxon, but he also has uh, Chase Sexton right behind him. And there, Ryan Dungey in the top. So MC, that's got to make you feel good. Ryan Dungey in the top five after five years off it's pretty incredible he's got to be feeling the nerves at the moment and he's going to be able to check the pace of these guys and the speed that he has missed over the last few years pretty impressive tomac taking the measure of mackerath who is a late fill-in we just saw dean wilson hanging out of the infield with injury mackerath is the fill-in on that bike good start for him but here comes the competition christian craig on the 28 and also sexton on the 23 with dungy with them as well Oh, the fans are absolutely loving this. We might be set for another classic Roxon versus Tomac battle, but you know that Sexton RJ is motivated to go with them. Absolutely, and, and we got to watch the first lap. Everyone gets so excited because you can see Ken Roxon has got himself a pretty big lead. Once these guys settled in a little bit, you see the guys just start to once again use that, use the lines and everything. As we see Eli Tomac making a small mistake there, but Chase Sexton uh, working with McElrath. Um, I think we're going to see a lot transpire throughout this race. It's not just going to be, this is not what we're going to see at the end. Jeremy? You know, like we, we've seen in the past, these guys want to go so fast right now because they're so excited. But look, the track is only going to take so much. There's a little water on the track. It's slippery in spots. So they have to be patient. But you see right now Sexton losing a little bit of time to these guys because he's not forcing it enough. He needs to work his way past McElrath in a hurry so he can keep up with that lead pack. And McElrath missed a lot of time in Supercross with a concussion, only has a few weeks on the bike. So I talked to him earlier, and he's in a little bit of a tough spot. 
he's trying to prove to this team that he could be a full-time guy all summer. Right now, he's only contracted for four races, but he's also working his way back from injury, and he hasn't raced much really in the last two seasons, so he's trying to ride within himself, but also impress everyone that's watching this event. So far, so good for the number 12, holding off Sexton. There's Dungey hanging with Craig and the rest of the field. On the 250 podium, we listened to Hunter Laura saying that you can't push this track. There's a lot of ruts. you got to work yourself side to side. Both him and Jeff made comments that the track is very tricky. As you can see, it's starting to dry out a little bit, and those hard edges are coming up. So depending on what the your tire selection, your suspension uh, uh, selection, it's going to change throughout the day. But right now, as Jeremy said, Sexton has to make a move and not lose sight of the leader. Yeah, because Ken Roxon's first lap speed is lethal. They are already four seconds up here on this battle. McArath versus Sexton. Sexton's going to have the inside here. He's going to send it. Can he get the Honda to stick? Whoa. No, McArath is not taking it. Great wow. commitment by McArath. He knew that he was going into a left into a right, so just hold the outside. But here comes Sexton up the inside. Nice, so. nice line selection there. As you talked about, Rick, you know, he went outside, kept the momentum, made a pass up the inside. Nothing uh, nothing he could do about that one for sure. But it was good racing. Even though that uh, uh, McElrath, you know, sent it in there pretty hard, he didn't take him out, didn't brush him or anything like that. It was just good, clean racing. That's what we have to see because contact is part of motocross, just not taking the guy out at the legs. That's that's what we got to watch out for. Okay, so you see there in the lower right, that is Roxon and Tomac. Ken Sexton closed the gap on them. Now that he's gotten around McElrath, and McElrath will have more pressure. Christian Craig, very fast on this racetrack. He's a Southern California native. So Craig knows his way around here. So he's going to be there applying pressure on the number 12. But Ken Sexton, who was the fastest qualifier, closed down on the leaders. Chase Sexton, and one of the things I was talking to him and also the team Honda guys at Trey Kennard, that he is running what they call a BFRC shock. And it's the same thing that Tim Geiser ran over there. To explain that, it's a shock that all the valving is done inside the shock body and not in the reservoir. So it's a different shock than Ken Roxon is running. But Chase Sexton really likes the feel of it. He says it feels more positive. He can read the bike a little bit better. So something new and uh, innovative. It's been around for a while, but these guys are starting to reuse it, and it's looking great with Chase Sexton. But the guy in front is Ken Roxon. He's got the other style. Yeah, his Honda looks pretty good well as well as we focus back in on Craig. Now, Craig is your new champion of the 250 Supercross West campaign in Supercross. But usually he moves up to the 450 for the summer. He did last year, and he's back again this year. But Craig has already signed a full-time 450 deal for 2023. And as we were talking about last night, Jeremy, you got to figure now Craig is like, I'm not just here to learn the 450. I got to show everybody that I'm a contender. I'm serving notice for next year that I can run with these guys. And so far, so good for the 28. And here's a battle we wanted to see. Something old, something new. Ryan Dungey, the old champion of KTM, and their new recruit this year, Aaron Plessinger, about to do battle. When I talked to Ryan yesterday, I was wondering why, kind of why are you doing this, you know? And, and he said, for me, it was sort of unfinished business with himself. That, you know, you go from being a full-time racer, started racing at five years old, and Jeremy, you know that schedule. It's every day, everything that you do is to be a better motorcycle racer. And then you go from that to being at home all the, all the time. He doesn't, he didn't go from that to sitting on the couch and getting fat. He's always stayed in tremendous shape and always continued to ride, but he said, you know what? I want to go back and be competitive. I think it's going to be the best thing for me, for my wife, for my son, everything that I got going on. And I am unbelievably impressed that he is running this strong, running actually now in six, uh, sixth place. He's got Plessinger all over him. We had Caroli behind them. Caroli last year's lost spot. Shout out to Alex Martin on the Muckoff FXR Club MX Yamaha. He is in eighth. This is his first 450 national for Alex, who had traditionally been a 250 rider. There you see him. And now we see Antonio Caroli, the nine-time world champ out of Italy. He's 36 years old, but do not let that fool you. He can still go fast, and he is cagey all week. Everyone talking about his approach, how he studies the racetrack, how he studies the other riders. It's going to be fun to have him on board this year. Well, after talking with him, you know, his big thing was he didn't get a chance to do a lot of motos. He's done a bunch of laps testing for KTM over in Europe. But he said the first couple of motors he did, so he showed me his hands. They were scabbed up a little bit, rented some blisters and stuff. And he said, you know what? 
if I, I if I'm not in the top ten, I'm not going to continue to do it. Right now, he is solidly in ninth place, but the race is not over. He's one of those guys, as you said, very cagey, very racy. He's he's going to keep getting faster as the day goes on, or the fitness is going to catch up to him. Or we'll wait and find out. Yeah, he told us yesterday it's really going to be down to oh mistake there from Caroli. Must goes down. He said for him it really might come down to just being able to adapt and be efficient because he knows the fitness isn't quite where it was when he was a full-time racer. Only started doing 30-minute motos last week. A lot of the riding he's done this year, testing for KTM. You do a lap or two. You pull in and change the motorcycle. So we're seeing him try to learn. And by the way, they don't get much time on these racetracks in practice. So for him, Jeremy, it's going to be a steep learning curve. You get about two laps, and it's hammered down on these tracks. Yeah, a lot of these guys that are in front of them are riding this track on a weekly basis. Uh, Fox Raceway has open practice in the middle of the week. A lot of these pros come out here and ride it. They're used to this dirt. They're used to the lines. They're used to looking around, seeing what's out here. This is obviously a different configuration for the Pro National, but he's definitely had a setback when it comes to that, but still very impressive. Like RJ said, running the top 10 is pretty awesome. And 10th place, a name I had not heard, Josh Gilbert, is that the United Kingdom is on the 323. He was fast in qualifying. He's in 10th place right now. And Roxon's lead is actually stretched a little bit over Tomac up front. It went from 1.9 to 2.6. So, so far, so good for Roxon's return to racing after missing a couple of months of action in Supercross. So many stories to tell here. But up front, it's a familiar one. Round one, Ken Roxon knows how to start season strong. And that's exactly what he's doing here. So Ken Roxon, I don't think this is a surprise, looking good. He always looks good to the motorcycle. And he's starting to actually stretch it more and more. Each time we get the splits between he and Tomac, Roxon is absolutely on fire right now. Well, and he took some time off. You know, he said he had a, a bout with, um, you know, with feeling sick and it wasn't feeling good. And it maybe was the best thing he could do. I, I can't remember in my career that where I would have ever done that. But he knows his body. He's, he's a very highly trained athlete. And he's been through some unbelievable injuries, how he survived with that hand injury that we saw a long time ago from Anaheim uh, Supercross. But right now, he, evidently, he's done the right thing because he's carrying it. But here we see Chase oh. Sexton has moved into second. Well, we noticed that Tomac was losing a lot of time to Roxanne, and Now he's lost a position. So MC, not what we <laughs> expected here from Tomac. Honda wow. Boys 1-2 again. You know, we look back a few laps ago, we saw Chase Sexton behind McElrath kind of getting held up a little bit. And like I said, the track was a little wet in the beginning, right? So he he obviously figured, hey, I got to pour on the steam now. He got by McElrath. Track looks really good. These guys really hauling the mail at this point. Uh, made the move on Tomac, but now he's going to see if he can chase down Roxon, I think he's going to be able to do it. Let's see what happens here. Well, if we look at the times, uh, Ken Roxon had a 2.18.1, and Sexton had a 2.17, so a half a second quicker that last lap. If he can keep that momentum up, we're going to see him chip away at that lead on Ken Roxon. So Chase Sexton is the man on the move right now. Yeah, and only 10 minutes into this moto, so we're really just getting started here. As for Tomac, small question mark coming in due to the knee injury late in Supercross. We'll see how he holds up as the moto goes on. We're just getting started with Lucas Oil Pro Motocross for 2021. We're at round one in Southern California. We will head to Northern California next weekend for round two. That's Saturday, June 4th, starting at 4 p.m. Eastern time, 1 o'clock local. This is a really awesome celebration for Honda celebrating their 50th year in American Motocross. Rick Johnson, you were there on hand as one of Honda's great champions of the past, and they unveiled the new bikes, the 2022 team. And they're having some success at the racetrack today, so it is a Honda weekend. It is a very, very strong weekend right now for Honda at this point. First motors are looking very good. But you know what? I got to give you my top 10 of all time Honda great riders. Number one, Gary Jones. Two, there he is on the left. Marty yep. Smith, Donnie Hansen, Johnny O'Mara, David Bailey, Jeff Stanton, Jeremy McGrath, Ricky Carmichael, and the new Jet Lawrence. You forgot yourself there, RJ. 
Well, yeah, yeah. You gave us nine. Okay, and me. <laughs> All right, you're putting yourself in the top ten. <laughs> no, I put myself yeah, I'm somewhere in the top ten, but no, I was very proud to be part of part of that group. As we're watching, I don't want to take anything away from here. Chase Sexton is chasing down his teammate, Ken Roxon, right now. He has got that lead down to just under two seconds. Well, it was a Honda 1-2 in the 250 class, first moto. Honda 1-2 in qualifying in the 450 class. A Honda 1-2 early in this first moto. Oh, my gosh. Chase Sexton just threw down a 216 lap time by far faster than anyone on the racetrack. Pretty impressive. What what we're, the key to this is going to be, it's always fun to do the chasing. When he gets there, is he going to be able to make the pass? All right, here's our motorsport.com whole shot replay. Roxon up the inside. Jay McElrath with a great start around the outside. He's loving all that horsepower, but Ken Roxon um, starting off where he left off here last year. He loves this starting line and did a great job. Actually ran away from everybody these first two laps. Unbelievable how quick he started this race. So there it is. Motosport.com. A whole shot is Ken Roxon. How long can he hold it? Because now Chase Sexton is on the charge. And Sexton's feeling it right now. We're away at break. I caught both of you guys <laughs> using the hand motions, really liking what you were seeing. What did you both see first, RJ? What I what I saw is just his timing, his impeccable with where he stands up. He reminds me of David Bailey so much. Even with that number 23 that David used to run, it very much looks the same. But David was that kind of rider, very clean, very strong, lower, uh, lower body, big legs. And Chase Sexton, you can see, a, he's a specimen. He's unbelievably strong. Not taking anything away from Kenny Roxon, but I just love his timing where he's sitting and where and how he's accelerating jeremy i, I watch chase and i mean technically he is so sound on that bike it's just so fun to watch like we talked about with his standing up in certain sections he just really pretty to watch and it's almost sneaky fast speed you watch him and you don't notice how fast he's going but look at the time he's making yeah it's pretty noticeable now he has eaten up the gap that roxon had now roxon will look over his shoulder he knows it's his teammate right there sexton chooses to follow and we're going to come back across the starting line section here in a moment. And we saw some passing in this corner in the 250s. But right now, Sexton again just following. The mindset that Chase Sexton has right now is that I can try. I can. I, I know that I can catch him because I've done it twice now. I can try this outside. He can start doing a little bit of line searching and then put the best together. And then when he does, or if he does pass Kenny Roxon, he can put a sprint on, put all the best lines together. So he's in a good spot, and Ken Roxon has no idea where he's going. Only knows when he's on right on the inside of him. Hey, Roxon had that look over his shoulder, realized Sexton is there, and the next next couple of corners, he's actually being able to stretch it so a good battle up front and how about the man on the move eli tomek is still third ryan dungey has climbed to the number four position in his wow. first race in five <laughs> years unbelievable he's gotten around craig and mackerel he's holding off plessinger this section of the track though clearly working for sexton as he closes back down on roxon look at the bite he gets from the inside he's running the inside lines carrying all that speed look at that oh this right could be around. it going outside right Turns into inside. Wow, that was a cool line from Ken Roxon. Yeah, Roxon holds, holds that outside and holds on to the lead. You guys see that? He jumped down that little yep. downhill, right? That was really, really cool. Creative for sure. Well, MC, that is that is what Supercross brought to motocross back in the 80s because we were doing that, you know, when we would go to the nations and stuff like that, double and tripling bumps and quadding and jumping six or seven bumps in, using them like a double jump and not just trying to hit every bump like old school motocross. So that's the evolution. I was way before your time. Well, we've always <laughs> seen that from Ken Roxon. He's real creative out there. Got a lot of cool lines. Hey, we're halfway Ooh, through. Whoa. Oh, whoa. And the berm almost blows out there on Sexton in that right-hander. We're already halfway through this moto. 15 minutes down, 15 minutes to go. You can save 15% or more on your insurance with Geico. As the Honda riders exchange lines and lap times and also cool riding techniques you yeah. really can't do it much better than either one of these and the fans are getting into this as well this is a fantastic battle sex it up inside oh. contact between the teammates <laughs> there you go who's uh, that's alpha male right there i'm going to come in and rub you a little bit because i want to be the number one guy in the, in the paddock because it's one thing to get beat by another factory rider but to, you want to be the fastest guy in your tent so right now they're shooting for alpha male status wow i, I do not think roxon expected that one you know what that was a sign of Hey, you're in my way. <laughs> Get out of the way. All right, this is good. This section of the track, a little bit better for Roxon on the previous lap, and he's doing it again. Adds a little bit of gap between himself and Sexton, but the other side up by the hills have worked well for the 23. Let's 
Check out this contact again, RJ. Look at the boxing section as he goes. He gets a good run coming over here, then shoots to the inside, and then he, oop, a little bit of little bit of run over. That could have been very nasty. I don't think he was trying to take him out, MC. Well, you can see he had a lot of momentum. Ken closed the line down, really leaned the bike down into his front fender, which probably did chase a favor because didn't let him high side. Ooh, Sexton sent it off that jump into the braking bump, bottomed out, almost crashed, and still go. is going to take the lead. Ooh. Well, and we haven't seen Kenny really do a lot of retaliation. When he gets leaned on, he doesn't lean back, but we might see it right here because you got brushed on. We saw him look over his shoulder, but now Sexton's got a good run. Jim, Jeremy? He picked up the line right there. Yeah, you guys see it. that? Sexton is no dummy. He grabbed the same line as Ken did the lot before, recognized that it had some speed, made that cool little double down the hill, carried the speed around the outside, and uh, Ken's going to have to do all he can to stay with him. Yeah, and that's going to be disheartening. When, when somebody catches you from a long ways back and then starts to pull away from you, now now Section has enough room where he can run his lines. So in my opinion, what's happening with, 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 with Kenny, right now he's watching his lines and going, what was he doing that I didn't know? All right, so Chase Sexton going to run the point position here. Give you the GoPro course preview and show you what it's like to be on board one of these bikes. This is from qualifying and practice earlier. That just shows you how tight this first two turns are. There's the right, in, I mean the left, into the right. We see Justin Marshall look to the outside, but now that opens up the inside for the other guys. That's what it's like to ride here at Fox Raceway at Pala. We'll be right back. There's more action on this racetrack cover it when we return. How about this? Ryan Dungey has caught Eli Tomac for third in his first race in five years. Dungey made a living on the podium and he's getting right back into position for it. Well, Jason, I, I, I've got to think there might be something up with Eli's knee because he was three seconds off the pace when it came to Ryan Dungey. Ryan Dungey did a 220, Eli Tomac with a 223. So did he, is that knee flaring up with him? Oh, and feet off the pegs, an uncharacteristic mistake from Tomac. Dungey, Dungey trying to get him. Now in Supercross, when he was riding with that knee injury, Tomac said he was good in the first half of the race, and then it started to go away. And that might be the case here. Ryan Dungey is up into the podium position. Unbelievable, with Christian Craig now going wow. by Eli Tomac as well. Yeah, there's a um, problem here for the number three. Yeah, we don't see this happen with, with Eli Tomac, so something is wrong with him. Hopefully it's not a bad injury, and he'll be, he'll be strong in the rest of the year, but something's up. Unbelievable what Ryan Dungey has done. And shout out to Christian Craig, who's going to push Dungey all the way down to the end. He would love that podium spot. And Craig is doing his job because Ferrandis is out and Tomac is struggling. And he's going to try to put the Yamahas up on the podium anyway. Dungey's going to have to fight for it. Craig is riding well. Yeah, Christian Craig is, is you know, obviously coming off a very strong Supercross, the Ooh. Supercross West Ooh. Championship. And I got to throw kudos out to Mike Craig, his dad, you know, won the Tampa Supercross, was a factory Yamaha rider. We didn't hear much about him, but you know what? Christian Craig doing a great job. Hey, it's the 50th anniversary celebration of this sport. We're talking about great legends and rides of the past. It's almost like we have a time machine going. Ryan Dungey has returned to racing. He has not raced this series in six years, and he has moved into his customary position, third place up on the podium. He passed Eli Tomac to do it. Tomac is struggling big time right now. We presume it might be the knee injury he was carrying coming into this season. But the battle for third is not over. Christian Craig is trying to run with the number five. He makes a few mistakes. He's able to pull Dungey back in. So this battle is not done. Well, we have definitely the young and the old. As we look back, we watched that pass between Dungey, Craig, and Eli Tomac. You can see here comes Dungey, starts to set him up. Eli Tomac made a small mistake. Notice how he's keeping you know, the feet off the pegs. But watch here, small mistake. That holds up Ryan Dungey a little bit. And then the, right around the next corner, comes to the inside and takes it away. Followed by in the you know in his draft is Christian Craig. We see him come around and he's right there as well. So something up with Eli Tomac. 
expect the unexpected here. Ryan Dungey up to third, but Craig right behind him. Let's send it down to Jason Thomas. I'm down here with uh, Monster Star Yamaha's Jeremy Coker. Now, roller coaster week for you. You lose Dylan Fernandez, the defending champion to injury just before the race. You got EY Tomek running around out here, a charge from Christian Craig. Walk us through the, the moto so far. Yeah, you know, it's absolutely heartbreaking to lose Dylan right before the season. <clears throat> to not be able to run number one plate is heartbreaking for us and for him. Uh, you know, fortunately, we have two amazing riders still on the team, and it's proving right now. Eli Tomax is an amazing rider, and Christian Craig's out there fighting for a podium, so it's awesome. Actually, just made the pass for the podium by Dungey, so it's going good. The team's just got to keep it up. And, yes, Craig does make the move on Dungey. He just didn't give up a couple big mistakes, and he kept charging for it. Well, I think for Christian Craig, seeing Dungey in front of him was probably some motivation, right? He's like, hey, <laughs> no. I can pass this guy. He has a race in a you while. You want that. Yeah, exactly. But we know Dungey, he is just strong. He's picking up where he left off. He's uh, Mr. Consistent when it comes to podium finishes and such a great champion. So uh, it's surprising to see him up in the top three, top four, but, man, he's doing great. Let's take through the pass here, RJ. You see Ryan Dungey look over to the inside, like, what's coming? Where's he coming from? And then Christian Craig right around the outside, carries his momentum, comes up. But what I love is notice Ryan Dungey holds his line, does not crisscross over, puts himself in a safe spot. Now he's watching Christian's lines to see it where he was losing time to him. Not losing time, by the way, is Ken Roxon. He has kept close to his teammate, Chase Sexton, they're telling us on the screen here, it's only 1.8 between the teammates. There's a couple of lap riders. The rider on the inside is your leader, Sexton, and there is Roxon. So this might not be over, especially with the lap traffic holding up Sexton. Well, lappers can definitely play a big part, but uh, you can see the Sexton's trying to make his move and then use him as a pick. So if he can go in there, mess that rider up, and, and block them back a little bit, that'll give him a little bit more space. But uh, it could either hurt you or help you. And Roxon got a little better out of that exchange. Hit the lappers in the right spot. Sexton going to drop the hammer and try to extend the lead again on his teammate. It has been an all Honda show so far here at Fox Raceway. 1-2 in the first 250 moto of the year. They're looking to be 1-2 in the first 450 moto of the year as Sexton leads Roxon. Sexton and Roxon continue to exchange fast laps up ahead. That is Craig third. Dungey, Tomax just trying to hang on now. Just ran a 224 lap in fifth. Plessinger behind him in sixth was a 221. And fastest man on the track right now is actually back in seventh place, Jason Anderson. So a terrible start for Anderson. But the Kawasaki man is up to seventh. More lap traffic for Sexton to deal with. The shout out to Josh Moseman there who just went a lap down. He is an, a, a journalist now, former pro. Worker at Motocross Action Magazine decided to come out and see if he could qualify. He made it into the show, just went a lap down. But great job for uh, Josh, whose brother Michael is, of course, a star in the 250 class. Pretty impressive for a guy who's not a full-time racer to qualify for the 40-rider field today. And Sexton starting to stretch it back out. Roxy gave him a brief challenge there. Well, and that's the thing. If, if Roxy was going to make his move, I think he would have to do it there. Now you can see that section is inching away if if rocks could pull that in i definitely think he would because now's the time of the race with just under five minutes to go jeremy you don't want to sit back you're not playing a game now you have to go you have to charge you have to make your move now yeah absolutely he started to gain a little time and uh he's not pulling it back now so The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on motorcycle insurance. Motosport.com. Make your next ride your best ride. And by Monster Energy. Unleash the beast.
Ricky Two Hip Johnson was one of Honda's great champions of the 1980s, a leader on and off the track for both speed and style. And Johnson stood out in a stable of red riders of that era, including fellow AMA Hall of Famers like David Bailey, Jeff Stanton, and Jean-Michel Bale. Plus, his outspoken podium speeches and relentless style on the track made him a fan favorite in what just might be motocross's most competitive decade. Johnson was so famous, he became a hero to an aspiring fellow El Cajon California racer who would go on to win seven NASCAR championships. His name is Jimmy Johnson. RJ would capture his first 250 National Motocross Championship in 1984 on a Yamaha, besting Honda rider Ron Lachine by eight points. Then Johnson moved to Honda in 86 and really turned it up, earning back-to-back -back championships in 1986 and 1987. In 87, he would double up on AMA Championship hardware by also taking the first of two consecutive titles in the 500cc class. After a successful career on two wheels, Johnson would find success in stock cars and off-road truck racing. He would win multiple titles and establish himself as a true leader in the off-road racing community. Rick Johnson is a member of the AMA Motorcycle Hall of Fame and the Motorsports Hall of Fame of America. All right, and thanks to uh, MX versus ATV Legends video game for bringing us those bios. RJ, my inspiration back in the day, no doubt about it. I'm sure, Jeremy McGrath maybe was uh, taking some notes as well. Oh, yeah. That's my man. <laughs> RJ's my man. Uh, that's awesome. As we celebrate 50 years of history, we'll have bios on all the champions of this series as the season rolls on. Great to be in the booth with you two today, Jeremy McGrath and Rick Johnson. We'll have Brock Glover in the booth next week at Hangtown. And we might be looking at a future legend of the sport right now. Chase Sexton has turned up the heat, and what has happened? Uh, our timing and scoring is showing Ken Roxon no longer in the number two spot. We'll have to see if uh, that's timing and scoring or if Roxon has run into a problem. Sexton no problems at all here in the lead, and looking good in more ways than one, not just on the stopwatch, but the style, something that everybody talks about. But just take a look at the left category. A 28-second lead and 34 seconds over Ryan Dungey. So something definitely happened. Obviously, I, I think uh, Roxon went down. We're just, I'm just speculating, but you can see that he's back up. Um, actually, no, he still keeps falling back yeah, we'll further see. and further. So we will, we will find that out. We'll try to get that. But this is the man as we watch Ryan Dungey as he works his way through. Kudos to this guy. Top three, but he has a Jason Anderson right on his tail. I'm not sure what happened to Anderson early in this moto. We didn't see him, but his lap times have been unbelievable as of late. He has consistently gone green. Fastest laps on the track the last three laps around. He is flat sending it on that monster Kawasaki. We did see on the start, he got a buried in the pack. So mm -hmm. he's had to come from behind. Ooh, whoa, Dungy getting sideways up that hill. You see that? I mean, Anderson's got to see that and go, all right, man, I got to I got to get by this guy. But yeah, what a what an incredible moto from a bad start for Jason Anderson. Uh, he'll put some pressure on Dungy. These two used to ride and train together. So we do have some familiar foes on the racetrack. Some, though, Dungy has never raced. So it'll be interesting how this plays out throughout the year. This would be for third and fourth as we try to get an update on what has happened to the 94. And if he is indeed out, it would move Dungey to third and Christian Craig all the way up to second. And time running out. Okay, it is a transponder error. We do not have a problem for Roxon, so he is in the number two spot. Good news, okay, sigh of good. relief Ooh. if you're a Roxon fan. So, yeah, his transponder just didn't pick up last time through. We were looking all over to see if there was a 94 down somewhere, but he's just still circulating, and he's fine. So this is actually the battle for fourth and fifth. There is Roxon. All systems go for him. No problems for the 94. But still, we do not see Sexton in front of him. Sexton has a contr uh, controlling lead right now. So right now, Kenny's trying to figure out, is there going to be some changes? These last couple laps, if you uh, have a problem or you get beat like that, MC, you can chime in on this. You're thinking about what are the changes that I'm going to tell the guys? You know, are we going to do some stuff to the motor, make it more rideable? Are we going to change my tire? Are we going to talk to the Dunlop guys? Oh, there's Anderson oh. up the inside. Anderson let him have it. Yes, Anderson shooting up the inside. And Dungy just kind of moving away. He's not going to put up a fight, not going to run dirty, a dirty race because he's not sure if he's going to run the whole season. But to finish my thought about Roxon, what he's going to do is think about the changes and come, try to come back stronger the next time out. He's going to look around the track. He's going to be searching for lines because he's going to go, man, how is Chase getting away from me, right? Obviously, he's thinking about the bike. He's going to get in the pits, talk to the mechanics, figure out what he can maybe adjust, maybe make a change to make him more comfortable to be able to ride a little faster lap time. But right now, with such a cushion 
back to third. He's going to be able to look around, take a look at different lines, see what happened to the track, and see it how see how it developed. Uh, look, because getting second at a national like this in Moto One is as good as winning the Moto. You yeah. can still win this overall, without a doubt. You just need to fine tune it a little bit for second Moto. Yeah, but you just hate to lose those 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 three points at, between first and second. So for those of you that are new to this between first and second is a three point gap and then it goes two 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 almost all the way back so it's when you watch jason anderson this guy rides looser than anybody else out there because he grew up in, in new mexico hard packed dirt which that's where i think a lot of the southern california guys had advantages before but you watch him he can lose his front wheel and he's very comfortable with it he doesn't have a problem with that whatsoever so he is the man on the move once again Right now, we see Kenny Roxon with a 2.17 has the fastest lap the last rate, last time around. So yeah. maybe Roxon's making a push now. And Roxon is actually still in the number two position. He's not picking up on the transponder feed on the left side, but he is in second, and he just turned in the fastest lap uh, the last time around of anyone on the racetrack as we go back to Dungey. Definitely want to give Craig, Craig credit, though, looking for that moto podium in third. But what an impressive comeback for Ryan Dungey. I think there were a lot of people worried that you can go undo some of your legacy if you come back and uh, you know i say pride speaks a little too loudly you come back and think you can get to your old level uh he is not that far off no. of his old level no. here he is riding great it's pretty impressive and uh you know i had him probably t to be honest a six or seven in the moto but man he's uh really throwing it out there today getting uh, like rj said earlier you know Expect him to hit his stride at round two, round three, round four when he gets used to this speed again. But man, what an impressive comeback here. Last year, they actually had him come out to California to test the motorcycle. A bit of a struggle outdoors for Cooper Webb and Marvin Muscan, who were the motocross riders last year, both not racing motocross this year. And Roger DeCoster said they put Dungey on the bike, and he said, I saw podium speed. So there's been no doubt that he still knows how to ride. Now, although, RJ, you were saying, we know he keeps in shape. Dungey's a, a fitness fanatic. There's nothing quite like that last percentage of being a full-time racer, so he's got to work his way back into that. Well, there's nothing like being in your 20s either. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's talk about you. Know that from experience, right? Yep. Yeah, we can all talk a little bit about that. But uh, the, the one good thing for Dunge, so known for consistency, he doesn't have a lot of wear and tear as far as big injuries. You know, no. he was always pretty healthy his whole career. Well, as we're watching right now, we're, we're watching uh, Chase Sexton out front, and there we see Ken Roxon as he starts to go by. So Chase with a pretty comfortable lead at this point. We're down to two laps to go, but you can see how much harder it's getting. All that soft dirt is moving off to the side, and it's getting pretty sketchy. The guys are losing the front wheel a lot, like I was talking about with Jason Anderson. But MC, did you, growing up in SoCal, did you like the track when it got like this or dislike it? Well, look, when back in our day when being in southern california and growing up here lots of hard pack right tracks, tracks out, right yep. it took me a long time to learn how to ride soft tracks with ruts and all that so yep. uh, that was an adjustment for me riding back on the east coast especially in the mud since we don't really get much rain out here uh, those are the things i had to get used to but today's track is a lot like at least the first motos here have been a lot like the east coast track we'll see how it shapes up for moto two uh, it is getting hard as you can see getting a little more hard pack but as I said earlier, these guys ride here quite a lot. They're used to this place. Well, Sexton sure looks like he's used to it. Hey, Anderson is not done. After disposing of Dungey, he continues his torrid charge. And with one lap to go, he has Christian Craig in his sights. This would be for third. And I said this during the break, Christian Craig, fresh off a Supercross West Coast win. And you know what? Got to throw a shout out to his dad. Mike Craig was a Tampa Bay Supercross winner. Oh, also oh, Team oh. Yamaha. Oh, big mistake. Not a huge mistake. He can make that back up uh, by Jason Anderson. But to finish the thought about Christian Craig, you got to throw a shout out to his dad, Mike Craig. Um, you know, to, to watch his son go on to win a championship like that has to be unbelievable. But right now, Christian Craig has his hands full with Jason Anderson. Yeah, and Craig moving to the 450 outdoors each summer, looking to start the year with a podium. And how about that? A team that has Dylan Ferrandis, last year's champ, and Eli Tomek, a three-time champ. The first Yamaha home, it looks like it's going to be Christian Craig. It has been a bit of a struggle in the second half of the moto for Tomac. We presume that's because of the knee injury he was carrying coming into this race. He is in seventh, but Craig is representing the Yamaha Blue Crew well. But Anderson is back. He made up ground after that mistake. You said it, RJ. He is loose on that bike. <laughs> but, and, and, you know, I worked with, I had the pleasure to work with Jason when he was on Suzuki's, you know, back when he was a little kid. 
and his just the biggest thing for me when I was coaching him, you don't have to pass everybody on the first lap. <laughs> and you watch how aggressive he is and how strong he is and how committed he is. Unbelievable champion, obviously past Supercross champ, but he wants to win that national championship. Yeah, he is aggressive right now. Last lap is going to come down to this battle for third. Roxon is secure in second. You see Sexton down to the lower right, headed for daylight to try to win the first moto of the year. A year ago, it came down to the wire in this first moto of the year between Sexton and Ferrandis. Sexton is making good on it now. Dylan Ferrandis not here today. Sexton looks great. Crowd loving this battle between Whoa. Anderson, who sent it again and crossed over those ruts. And what we're seeing out of Anderson is he's hitting those ruts and it's wanting to stand him up. Right, but what he has to do is he has to accelerate through that to keep from crashing. Checkered flag is out. Sexton has taken the win. Roxon is going to hold on for a second. And that final mistake might be enough. Looks yeah, like. the charge is over for Anderson. So <laughs> Christian Craig going to put it up on the podium. And that's why you bring three riders to the races. Tomax Elling for Anderson's out. Craig doing it for the Blue Crew. He'll come across on the 28 here in a minute. And Anderson going to have to settle for fourth. There is Craig. And Ryan Dungeon, his return to the sport, is going to be top five. And instant replay of what we saw in the 250 class two honda riders come in to sit down next to each other one two and they do it again in an immediate debrief between the teammates uh, uh, i'm watching to see if there's a little angry yeah i made a mistake over here and i think that's the same allowance i over the bar i do i over jumped that jump behind you i did not mean to i thought i struck it before i landed the bump and there it is six when i came into you i did not mean to do that looks like it's all good between the teammates <laughs> We'll be right back here. Fox Raceway at Pala. All Honda all the time so far this weekend. The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by Optima Batteries, the ultimate power source. Honda, celebrating 50 years of off-road dominance. And by Lucas Oil, keep that engine alive. All right, we are back. Monster part of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship this year. So it's what they call the rig ride. They bring all their athletes out and they hook the fans up with some swag. Let's get into our Lucas Oil Race Recap 450 Moto 1 earlier. The whole shot. Ken Roxon able to control on the inside. A good battle between he and Shane McElrath for that number one spot. Roxon just going to edge him out to lead early. Got one Honda up front. Let's make it two. Chase Sexton catches his teammate Roxon and surprising a little bit of incidental contact here, Rick Johnson, between uh, Roxon and Sexton. Right here, we see him. He kind of comes in, but then he backs off. Now, if he was trying to take him out, he would have drove through him. And there we see Sexton just over jump and send it, get him to full uh, head shake. But then it was the Chase Sexton show. We drove over AMC. Chase Sexton looked really good. He was probably fourth or fifth on the start. Had to make some time. Caught up, went through these guys. And here we see a battle between the old schoolers, yeah. Tomac and Dungey. I don't think people <laughs> thought we'd see Tomac and Dungey battling for a podium. And in the end, got to believe it's a knee injury for Tomac. After a couple of minutes, he started to fade back. Dungey gets around him for third, but Christian Craig would not give up on it. Even after making some mistakes, he just kept digging and digging and digging, and he would take the measure of Dungey here, Jeremy. Well, Christian Craig making a nice last pass here at the end of the moto, staying strong. Here we have Sexton coming through with a nice, easy victory. Probably a relief in his mind. Yeah, way to start the season. And holds off Roxon down to the end. So Sexton, who's always been good at this racetrack, does it again. So he fires first in a 24 Moto Championship. One down, 23 to go for Chase Sexton. Let's send it down to Jason Thomas. Down here with Chase Sexton. Now, Chase, you were fastest in time qualifying today. Clearly the fastest in that first Moto. You work your way through the pack methodically to get to the front. And, uh, yeah, really dominating Moto win. Yeah, that's uh, what uh, good rides are made of right there. I uh, didn't get the best start. I spun a little bit on the gate and uh, just had my work cut out for me past a few guys. And uh, Kenny and I had a good little battle there. And overall, was just feeling the flow and uh, just having fun. So looking forward to another good moto and uh, moto two. And uh, can't thank the whole Honda team enough. They've uh, put a lot of work into this bike and uh, pretty comfy on it right now. And that's impressive because 
uh, throughout a lot of the Supercross campaign. You heard about Sexton just trying to find that feel with the motorcycle. Clearly, he's got it right now. Well, and what I like is how composed he is. He doesn't look beat. He wasn't hyperventilating. He doesn't look tired. He looks very fresh and ready for the next moto. All right, Lucas Oil Motocross results from that one. McElrath, after that great start, ends up in 11th ahead of Josh Gilbert. A bit of an upstart here. And just outside of the points paying positions, Justin Rodbell in 21st. Josh Mosman, like we said, a journalist with motocross action, finishes up in 28th. There's the rest of your 40 rider field. Ken Roxon finishes this moto in second. Let's send it back to Jason Thomas. Ken Roxon, you've had some time off. This has been a good track for you, though. You come out swinging, battle with your teammate there for a bit. Still a really strong ride after many people are wondering what they would see from you today. Yeah, um, you know, I, I for some reason do good on this track, but I really tr struggle with these conditions. Um, and I, I unfortunately in this first moto, I didn't ride as loose as I wanted to. Uh, but it was the same story last year. Um, I struggled just in the first moto and then I got better. So uh, I'm really happy with the performance. I got a little bit screwed over uh, with the lappers and I kind of lost touch to chase a little bit. So I was just putting around in the end and trying to scout the track for a second moto as well. And um, yeah, I want to give a huge uh, shout out to my dad. Father, vielen Dank für die drei Wochen zu Hause. Wir arbeiten weiter, bis wir ganz oben sind. Uh, that's good stuff. We tend to forget that he is a native German speaker. He speaks English so well. So uh, shout out to Papa over there in Germany. Here's your Honda upcoming schedule for Lucas Oil Pro Motocross. Next week, we are off to Hangtown in Northern California on June 4th. And then Thunder Valley outside of Denver, Colorado will be round three. Then we head all the way east, High Point, Pennsylvania, Red Bud in Michigan, Southwick, the way 338 in Massachusetts. Millville, Minnesota, Spring Creek, Washuga, Washington, outside of Portland, Oregon. Unadilla in upstate New York, Buds Creek, Maryland. Ironman Raceway outside of Indianapolis, Indiana. And then we'll wrap it up right here at Fox Raceway again on September 3rd as we celebrate 50 years of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship. All right, this is great stuff with the Honda 1-2. And uh, Christian Craig finishes off on the podium on the Monster Yamaha Star Racing Machine. Let's send it to JT. Down here with Christian Craig, full-time 450 guy now. Come up with a podium in your first moto of the year, even with a crash. Pretty impressive stuff to, you know, pass guys that you've been looking up to a few, for a few years now. Yeah, I had to pass Dungey twice, and I'm like, wow, this guy's a legend, and uh, I'm glad he's out there. Same with Caroli, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I just had a good pace, and I had a tip over there in the beginning, and then just made my way back up to third, and then Jason caught me at the end, and it was a good battle. So uh, happy to be here. My whole team, Monster Energy Star Racing Yamaha. This is a hometown race for me, so uh, the fans show up for this one. Thank you, guys. All right, that is Christian Craig. Going to make a bid for the overall win if potentially things fall his way. A third can get it done. We've seen crazier things happen in motocross. So he's in the hunt today. Good ride for Anderson, as Craig mentioned. He's really putting some heat on him. And we are only halfway through the day. We'll be right back with 250 Moto2 at 6 p.m. Eastern and 450 Moto2 right after that. Four straight hours of live motocross coverage here on MAV TV. And don't forget our new Tuesday post race show. You can watch at 6:30. PM inside Pro Motocross. Myself, Rick Johnson, Jeremy McGrath, Jason Thomas will take you through the sights and sounds of the day. We'll get more scoops off the podium and everything you need to know to keep up on this series. Halfway through the day, RJ, man, it's 50th anniversary for Honda. What a great performance by their guys. Yeah, Honda, it looks <laughs> phenomenal with both wins, one, two in both classes, but man, Ryan Dungey and Crowley, yeah, they're yeah. here and they're representing themselves. You know, as, as they, as Ryan told me, I'm racing for me. This isn't for anybody else. MC, you got to feel the same. Well, I think Chase, Chase Sexton and Ken Roxton were obviously one of the favorites of the race. You know, I think this uh, having Ryan Dungey here was uh, absolutely great. Uh, we also had some great rides from Jason Anderson, Monster Energy Kawasaki team and, and Christian Craig from the Monster Energy Star Yamaha team. Uh, probably not really expected. I kind of expected a little something out of Jason, but Christian Craig, I know he's fast here at Fox Raceway. He rode a great race, so uh, lots of good guys. Surprising with Eli mm -hmm. Tomac, but we got some second motors ahead of us. Yep, and a long season to come. We're only halfway through round number one. We'll be right back here on Mav TV for our second 250 moto of the day. It was a Lawrence Brothers show there. We'll see if they can keep that up. Who can challenge them? The only riders to challenge the Honda boys were each other. Halfway through, stay tuned for 250 Moto 2. Congrats to our 450 Moto 1 winner, Chase Sexton.